Hello friends, it's the Carnivore Rabbi, and we're here, as my friend Reverend Jimmy says, to meet, pray, and love. And a couple of days ago, I talked about some insights from the Nobel Prize winning psychologist, behavioral economist, Daniel Kahneman. We talked about loss aversion and anchoring and how that can truly, understanding those phenomena can help us tremendously with the carnivore diet. But an astute listener pointed out to me another study that Kahneman did that can also help us tremendously. And it was one of the first studies he did in 1972, and it was about overcoming stereotypes. Now the study was fascinating, and it was, he asked several college psychology students. He gave them a description of somebody in high school. We'll call him Tom. And he said that Tom is a kid who is a little bit nerdy, likes sci-fi, and uh, now Tom is in graduate school. Remember, this is 1972. Now Tom is in graduate school. What type, they gave the, the students nine choices. Which type of graduate school would he be in? This is the question they asked the students. And almost all of the students said he would be in computer science. Now, that kind of makes sense. If you think about the description we got of Tom, he's a little nerdy, loves sci-fi, loves math and numbers. But the truth is, computer science was barely a program back in 1972. It was like 0.001% of graduate students. So these psychology students ignored all the statistical evidence and made a pure judgment purely based on stereotypes. They said, oh, this guy's a little bit nerdy. He loves numbers and sci-fi. He'll probably be studying computer science. They ignored the statistics and relied solely on the superficial description. Now this is, this may not sound significant, but this is groundbreaking work. In fact, this study was part of the basis for the phenomenon that came to later be known as Moneyball, which is used in professional baseball today. The idea that we shouldn't judge players based on superficial characteristics. Oh, how far do they hit their home runs? How big are they? But instead you look at the statistics and the managers who look closely at, at the statistics and make judgments based on those statistics are the ones who win. That's, that all started with Kahneman's research. Now, what, again, what does this have to do with the carnivore diet? I'll tell you, it goes back to motivation. It helps us understand and answer the question, who is most likely to succeed with the carnivore diet? And when we know that, we can look for certain characteristics and we can help motivate and train ourselves to succeed. Now, this is absolutely essential because I would estimate that 90 to 95% of people who start carnivore don't go through with it. They fail. I see it all the time. I have friends, they say, oh, they may even lose weight for a couple days, they feel good, and then it just gets too hard. So if we could figure out what works beyond the stereotypes, because the stereotypes would say people that are ultra disciplined, they would succeed with the carnivore diet. You do have to be somewhat disciplined. So someone who's maybe a Dr. Chafee or Dr. Baker, great athletes, very disciplined. To, to be a doctor, you have to go through medical school, you have to be disciplined. Maybe those are the kind of people who would succeed. But quite frankly, I don't think that's true. I think, of course, there are some who succeed. But truthfully, from what I've noticed, and this is where we need more studies like what Kahneman did, what I've noticed is that the key factor, the first key factor, is motivation. What is pushing you? What is it? Is it a dire health need? Is it an addiction? Is it mental illness? Soon I'll have a video about the son of the founder of Roblox who overcame bipolar. It's an incredible story and they're funding, the family now is funding tremendous research. But what is the motivation? That's a key factor. What is driving you? Is it health? Is it weight? Is it addiction? Is it just feeling lost and frustrated with yo dieting and other methods. What is that motivation and how powerful is that? That's the first factor we need to examine to get beyond the stereotypes. What's driving you? And look at successful carnivores and see what motivated them. Look at a guy like Bill Knott. I've told his story before. Hasn't been able to leave his house in years. That's a powerful motivation. Second thing we have to look at is the time. 
As I said, I know many people who have tried carnivore and they give up after a few days or even a few weeks. Now the truth is the beginning is the hardest part. Uh, part of it is getting over what, what's called the keto flu. When you reduce carbs, when you eliminate carbs, you're going to get horrible headaches and you're going to get diarrhea and that's really hard to get through. You have to become fat adapted. Now it would be very interesting to study how long does it take to create a habit. In other words, if you are able to stay carnivore for the first three weeks, if you can get through three weeks or even a month, are you then more likely to succeed long term? How long is it? Is it three weeks? Is it a month? Is it two months? Maybe it's two months. For some people, it's going to be six months. Kelly Hogan is a great example of this. So we need more research in that because if we have a general idea of how long you need to stick with it in order for it to become a habit, for you to become habituated to this practice, that can give people hope and motivation. You can know, if I can stick with this for four weeks or eight weeks, then I am much more likely to succeed. That's a motivating point. Right now, there's not much research on this, so we need that research. And Kahneman's example points us in that direction. We need to know motivation. We need to have some statistics, not just gut instinct. And that's really what it comes down to, is figuring out more about what types of motivation succeed. That's the key. I, I read a study a couple years ago about what leads people to invest, to think long-term. Because most people, they, money comes in, it goes out. But in the long run, you have to save some money if you want to be able to retire comfortably and to benefit from capital markets and so forth. So what motivates people to save? And the one thing that worked best, this is really incredible, is that parents who put pictures of their young children on their wallet, visible, not just in the wallet, but on the wallet visible. So whenever they pulled out they, their wallet, they saw a picture of their young children, that those parents saved the most. They had a direct visceral reminder of why they are saving. Now that's powerful. So if we can figure out what the equivalent for the carnivore diet would be, is it some type of mantra you can tell yourself? Is it seeing a vision board of a picture of yourself in better shape, healthy, with greater clarity? Maybe that's the motivation. But figuring that out can be tremendously helpful. Getting to that core motivation, getting beyond the superficial characteristics. And you know what else that requires? Is some introspection self-examination. You have to know yourself. You have to know what's bringing you to this way of eating. And I think many carnivores do know this is not terribly difficult to uncover. And the truth is, you'll uncover more the more you do it. My friend Larry, the carnivore soldier, likes to say you come for the weight loss, stay for the mental health benefit. You actually begin to see more benefits the longer you do it. And Larry also pointed out something very powerful about motivation. He gave an example of, let's say it's December 1st and someone puts $25,000 in an escrow account for you and says, if you can stay carnivore for 90 days, you'll get that money. You'd probably be able to do it. The holidays wouldn't be that difficult for you because you see that motivation at the end of the tunnel. It's a very clear financial motivation, right? So. Nobody's going to do that for us. That's a imagined scenario. But if we can find a compelling reason, something that is just as good or even better than $25,000 at the end of 90 days, then we can stay motivated. So what is that for you? What's your motivation? Even if you know it, reminding yourself of it can be incredibly powerful. So leave me in, tell me in the comments below or just tell yourself. But even more, if you say it in the comments, you'll inspire other people. What is your motivation for sticking to carnivore?